Welcome back everybody. If you haven't seen the first part of this video, it would make a lot more sense to go back and watch that first. We've already finished the electronics and now we're moving on to the mechanicals. Now, as I said in part one, if you had a hub motor, you'd pretty much be finished now. All you'd have to do is put it on a stand and start pedaling. But for me, I have one chain from the pedals to the wheel, which turns the wheel, but it doesn't turn the motor. The motor has a separate chain. So what I'm gonna have to do is modify this so that the chain from the pedals goes straight to the motor. Now, I've never really tried shortening chains or adjusting them or anything like that. So I don't know how well this is going to go. But the idea is that I'm going to break the chain and connect it straight to the motor so that once I pedal, it's actually turning the motor and then we're going to get our power out. So the first thing I'm going to do is use my chain tool to try and split this one. This is going from the motor to the rear hub. Now, I've not used one of these before, so I hope I get it right. It doesn't matter where we break the chain because we're just planning to remove it. Now, if you haven't seen one of these before, I believe the way it works is you put the chain in there when you tighten this up, it pushes through on this connector. I don't know if it's a rivet or whatever it is. It pushes through and it forces it out the other side, which lets you take the chain apart. Okay, let's loosen up. There you go. And we've still got the pin here. So there you go, we managed to split our first chain. Now let's split the next one. And we should hopefully be able to take this apart now. No, nope. yep, there we go. So we got it apart. And we've still got the pin in, so it's easier to push it through when we reconnect this. So now you can see that the chain is on here fine and we need to work out where we're going to break the chain now we want it fairly tight maybe i guess that one is going to be the best we can do it might be too much slack but uh we'll try that we'll try some. so now we've got the chain roughly to the length we want and we've got to try and reconnect it so let's try and push the pin back the way it came this is a little bit time consuming of course by the time I edit this it's going to seem really quick for you but for me this is I've spent quite a lot of time on this uh, it's not perfect but let's at least try and give this a go okay that didn't go great did it let's try again let's see if we can remove this chain guard because it's just getting in the way right now okay should have thought about that in the first place that's much easier so here's our chain. Okay, there we go. So we've got the chain on. We're turning the motor, but it's, it's not staying in line with each other. And I don't know if it's because we've got too much slack or if they're just not aligned enough. I think it might be the slack that's the problem. So maybe if we take one more link out, we might still be able to, because we've got quite a lot of slack here. In fact, what if I manually Yeah, see if I manually hold it some tension on there. It's still not great. Is it because these gears, uh, is it, could it be something to do with these gear teeth not matching up with this? I mean, the chain looks to be the same as the one I took off the back. Okay. Our chain is on, let's put our tensioner, basic tensioner in place, and pedal. Oh, that's actually better. Okay, not perfect, but that was better. Uh, maybe if we can remove just one link, we might be okay. Now I'm not sure what to do, because I can't connect this one if I break it here, because they're gonna be the same type and they're not gonna be able to join. So I actually have to go all the way there, but then I'm losing what is basically two links and I don't think our chain is going to be long enough to actually get it to meet up again like if I put it like that I don't think I'll ever get the chain back onto here so I guess removing a chain is not an option that has to go back there and then I have to come up with some kind of tensioner I guess 
So after some experimentation, I got this chain, which is the best I've had so far. If I run it without any tensioner, it goes for a little way. You can see that's what happens if you run it without any tensioner. It turns a little bit and then the chain comes off. Now if I use this screwdriver, just poke into a hole in the motor, you'll see that I can use this as a tensioner and I can get a lot of turns out of this. But of course, having a screwdriver jammed in here and me pushing down on it full time isn't going to work. It needs a proper tensioner with a free spinning wheel, um, which I've seen on motorbikes. But even if I did have one of those, I don't know where I would put it. Maybe mounted here and then pushing down on that, like that perhaps, could work. Um, but I don't know. So if anyone watching this has any ideas, please let me know. So now I'm going to connect the crocodile clips to the generator output. It's on the other side, but I won't be able to show you both sides at the same time, unfortunately. I'll make sure the switch is in generator mode. Now I'll connect the other end of the crocodile clips to this. And if you haven't guessed by now, this is the same light that we used in the previous part, part one. Just make sure all these cables are out of the way. Hopefully you'll be able to see this light. Let me put something under it. There you go. Now let's put our tensioner in place. And let's, oops, and let's spin the wheel. Oops. Okay, so nothing happened that time. Perhaps the switch is on the wrong setting. Flick the switch, put our tensioner in and then let's turn. There you go. So you can see the light here. Let me steady the bike. And you can see how bright I can get it now that I'm using the power of the pedals. But I'm still just using my hand, so imagine if you were sitting on this and riding. You could probably generate a decent amount of watts. This isn't easy by the way, it does take a little bit of strength to turn this. And I know some of you are looking at this and thinking, if you've modified the chain, how are you going to ride this when the summer comes? Um, what I'm planning to do is, I have another chain, an old chain from a bicycle that's very long. I'm going to put that to the size that the original ones were. So when summer comes, all I have to do is take these ones off and put the old ones, which will be the new ones, back on. Now, I'm probably going to end the video here because I'm kind of a crossroad now where I'm not sure what to do. Obviously, I can't keep a screwdriver jammed in there permanently. Um, and aside from that, it doesn't actually give the smoothest, you know, the smoothest turn. I want something that runs pretty freely. Otherwise, you're putting a lot of mechanical stress on the chain and, you know, it's just not going to work. So, this is a point where I ask you, the viewers, what should I do here? How can I make this chain keep under tension? Um, could I buy a tensioner from somewhere that bolts on here and then has a free spinning wheel that goes there? If yes, where can I buy one and do you think it will work? Um, I mean this thing has really made good progress. I'm, you know, I'm so close to being able to use this as an exercise bike and a generator. And if you're wondering, that is the same 12 volt incandescent bulb, so it is a very power hungry, power wasteful bulb. I hope you enjoyed this video, please give a thumbs up and subscribe for part 3.